Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam la Rasul Kareem <coughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome once again to another live presentation right here on Dar al Tarbiyah the Islamic Network my name is Brother Khayyam and of course <coughs> I share the company of Mufti Wasim the principal of the Dar al Ulum and of course as usual a lot of, a lot of questions always come in to our our whatsapp messages and our text messages a lot of questions and Alhamdulillah I must say we really appreciate all the feedback and all the questions and all the comments that we get week after week and of course what other avenue to get those questions answered live and direct you know directly from your seam of course and it is a major part of our program and what happens sometimes is that at the end of our program we normally have one or two questions left over from the week before and it has happened that in fact last week we did have some questions because we needed of course to close on time last week and inshallah this week we'll have to also close on time at 12. so with that said probably what we will do today inshallah is that we'll probably go into directly into some of our questions because of course more questions will come in as as i would expect today inshallah so with that said let me of course welcome mufti to our program here this morning mufti assalamu alaikum oh, how, how are you mufti Salam? so of course we did mention last week we were speaking a little bit about some of the virtues of Hajj and it's it's good to know that at least now a lot more people probably who may not have been able to save that amount because yes. I think it was close to 70,000 yes. which was what, what I paid what I paid um what I paid last year mm -hmm. when, when I went for Hajj around 70,000 so now the, the prices I'm seeing is probably considerably less based on the package anyhow but that's that's um, a different topic anyhow yes, that yes, we'll yes. we'll deal with another time probably coming closer to Hajj we'll deal with that but of course um, on another note Mufti we did mention last week that we have entered the month of Rajab yes and um, as we mentioned Rajab and from the time uh, as soon as people hear Rajab and they hear mm -hmm. Shaban they know Ramadan is right after yes. so I, I can't remember if we did mention the dua do mm -hmm. last week i think we, we were supposed to mention it but i think we, it just slipped us <coughs> that we didn't mention the the uh, the the dua when rajab starts yes. so probably what we'll do we'll just i i really want to go into uh some of the questions because yeah, sure. definitely what happens is that sometimes it piles up on us <laughs> mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we don't get chance and then i don't want anyone to feel that we have you know intentionally left out their question mm -hmm. right so what happens is that if somebody pr probably may not hear the answer they will say oh uh, you know i don't want to answer their question yes. so we do have a lot of questions left over from last week and i, I believe one or two left over from the week before mm -hmm. all right so we'll deal with all of them one at a time generally today so we may not really go into any discussion per se but i'll probably just ask you for a few few minutes Let's let's talk a little bit about the month of Rajab, yes. and of course maybe very briefly though Mufti, uh, yes. the dua we will probably mention the dua when mm -hmm. Rajab starts, yes. and of course we will probably mention mm -hmm. how we should from now on until Ramadan, and then we'll go straight to our questions earlier mm -hmm. on than than usual inshallah today Mufti. Yes. rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. I will also like to welcome each and every one of you to our program here today and greet you with Islamic greeting of peace by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the blessings, and the mercy of Allah be with each and every one of you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are here again, you know, and the month of Rajab has started. Um, it is narrated in, in many books that the dua of Rajab, the dua, special dua, used to be recited when the month of Rajab entered, which included uh, Rajab and Sha'ban in it. And it expressed the desire, you know, to live until Ramadan, obviously with the permission of Allah. The dua which we, it is normally recited, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us in Rajab and bless us in Sha'ban and reach us towards Ramadan. 
yani it means pay our lives until we reach the month of Ramadan. Obviously, Ramadan is it's a very sacred, blessed, and holy month. This is why it's called Ramadan Al Mubarak. It is called the holy and blessed month of Ramadan, and it's something that each and every Muslim, wherever he or she is in, on the face of the earth, uh, the, you know, we all look forward for it. We speak about it, and while looking forward for it. You know, there is that joy and, you know, joy and anxiousness in the heart to welcome it. Uh, what goes with that is preparation, a preparation <coughs> internally and externally, a preparation mentally, a preparation with respect to, you know, what we look at, what we are looking ahead for and what we are looking to do, you know. And just as, you know, uh, quite a few months before people, you know, would normally make preparations to go for their Hajj and fix their schedule, so to in Ramadan, many people make make preparations with respect to taking time off, fixing their schedule, allotting time sufficiently per day for many different acts of worship and more so the last 10 days to spend the Ertikaf in the Masjid, the house of Allah. So this is a time that we begin to speak about it um, because it is very close. When Sha'ban comes in, we are living in a time and day where the time is moving so fast, the month comes to an end before you could really think that it started. Subhanallah, you know, the, the months, they are passing like weeks and weeks are passing like days. So as we are coming there, you know, this is a very important time also to reflect on our own actions, reflect on our own selves, you know, and look to see what best we can do for our soul, mend our ways, make up for. And this is a very important part that we need to mention also. Um, you know, many a time that there are, you know, um, situations and cases, many, not only a few, where the fast of Ramadan is missed. The fast of Ramadan is missed on account of uh, sometimes um, a valid reason, sometimes not for a valid reason, but it is missed, which require the qadha which requires that the qadha or the doing over of that fast is, re, you know, it comes about um, in the case of women or in the case of males also who probably may have some valid reason that they could not observe the fast in Ramadan. Now, when this is the case, it means that we all know and we understand that there is something called the qadha of the fast, that we have to do the qadha of the fast. And it is, it is disliked and makru and abominable for us to leave, you know, our, um, you know, leave of making up, leave of making up for the fast for the whole year until another Ramadan comes in and that Ramadan meets us with fast on our shoulders, yani qadha fast on our shoulders. That should not happen. In fact, all the fuqah and the scholars have stated that and they have mentioned based on the hadith <coughs> of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when we have a fast which we have missed for a particular Ramadan then after the month of Ramadan instead of getting involved in nafil an optional fast or the sunnah day of fasting throughout the year we should first and foremost look towards fulfilling what we owe to Allah and that is the first fast of the Ramadan which has passed us so let's say last year Ramadan came to an end and when it left us we had missed certain amount of fast then we had that year from last year until this coming Ramadan to make up for. If we have not made up for it, we should at least try to make up for it. You know, women who were in their, you know, haith or nifas or probably they were pregnant or they were breastfeeding their children and they could not observe the fast. And also males who were in different sickness, going through different things and they could not fast, you know, and it was not a state where they had to pay fidya. Then we should try our best to make up for those fasts. We have the month of Rajab. You know, as much as possible with respect to the abilities we have and our the strength we have. I mean, obviously, nobody says to go and fast for the entire month or fast for a whole week straight. Straight, you know, we can't uh, do that because we have our jobs, we have many things to do. But in and out, we can choose days where it, it's you know it's okay for us to observe the fast. So at least, if not all, but at least most, we can make up for during the month of Rajab and during the month of Sha'aban before the month of Ramadan comes in so it would happen that when the month of Ramadan comes in we are actually not owing on any of the fast to make qadha of you know or we have actually fulfilled many of those qadha fasts already that's a very very important thing and that's one of the most important way of uh, using these months before Ramadan you know Rajab and Sha'ban before we actually reach the month of Ramadan
Right, and of course, coming closer, we will discuss it again yes. anyhow. And normally, I don't know, but Rajab and Shaban go so quickly. They're very, very And you feel like Ramadan is just tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> it goes very quickly. But inshallah, we will we will discuss it again, coming closer, inshallah. Yes. So, um, as I promised, Mufti, let's let's talk with, let's um, deal with some of the the questions. Yes, yeah. Right, that, and um, I must probably must mention is that some of these questions, of course, came to us last week mm -hmm. and the week before. Yes. Right? So if anyone doesn't hear the, their question, feel free to re-forward it yes. or send it back. Mm -hmm. Not a problem at all. And we will deal with them. And of course, we will have always new questions coming in for today anyhow. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through them one at a time and um, we'll see how far we can go. And of course, if any comes in today, what we'll do is we'll pause. Yeah. Right? We'll pause on these that, that were left over. And we will go straight to the questions that came today. Mm -hmm. And we will answer those today that came in today, inshallah. So, let, with that said, let's start one of these questions here. And a person is asking about something called Rukia. Yes. So, we could probably explain what that is. And the person is saying, I know there is a Rukia to blow in water mm -hmm. and to blow in the patient's air after reciting. Mm -hmm. And the person is saying, I got this on a particular website. Mm -hmm. And I am just attaching some information here that sent it was sent in a picture form. Mm -hmm. And it says that they just want to verify the method if mm -hmm. it is correct. Now, the thing about it is that we can't really... So many different Rukia might be available. Yes. And of course, the person did have a long, long list with probably to recite at the root a certain mm -hmm. amount of times, Surah Fatiha a certain amount of times, Surah Ikhlas, and mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. So, mm -hmm. of course, um, I am almost certain that there will be different recitations or different methods mm -hmm. for different ailments or whatever it is. Yes. So, let's probably first explain, Mufti, uh, what is Rukia when we hear yes. the term Rukia mm -hmm. and um, if there is any particular method or, or anything right. that we could verify here. On yes. our program. First of all, Ruqya from the word Raqqa, Ruqya. Ruqya, it means to to read, or in, in English it's called incantation, to, to read and blow on a person. This is what Ruqya means, to read and blow on a person. And Ruqya, the act of reading verses of the Quran and blowing on a person, is evident in the traditions of the Prophet. Uh, sometimes, you know, it is mentioned in hadith that if a person is suffering from a headache or pain in any part of the body, to sometimes place the right hand on that part and recite, or sometimes recite and then blow on your hand and pass it. Obviously, we have the the established practice where the Prophet Wasallam spoke about, you know, reading in your hands, you know, before you sleep, certain verses, and also, you know, um, the Fatima Tasbih and other things, and blow mm -hmm. it in your hand and pass it over your body. So all these things fall under the topic and the concept of Rokya. Okay? Now, there are, certain things that are evident in the traditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is directly uh, narrated in traditions then. They are mentioned straightforward mm -hmm. in the narration. It was not uh, made up and it was not brought together as a prescription and a remedy for something but they were naturally, they were actually mentioned you know, word for word, that read this so many times, mm -hmm. you know, before you do this, read this in the morning, read that in the evening, you know, blow it over the patient and things like that. And there are many of those things. With respect to um, what has been mentioned here, you know, the amount of times that a certain thing has to be done, you know. Um, but before that, the first thing about, you know, reading and blowing in the air, this is also evident. This is why we find that even, uh, you know, at the, the birth of a newborn baby, you know, we have the adhan being called, the comet being mm -hmm. called, you know, in the air. Obviously, these things have a lot of benefits for the child, you know, coming into the world. And also, it is a protection against evils, the shayatin and the devils. And so, too, when people, uh, sometimes they are possessed by evil jinnats, you know, and some jinn or spirit has taken them over. Sometimes the best thing to do is to recite, you know, in the air of the person. And the adhan is one of the most beneficial things that can be recited because clear cut in the narration of the hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari, Shaitan does not like the adhan. As soon as the adhan is called, he actually begins to run very fast. 
He runs very fast. So therefore, that's a very good amal, which we learn from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that a person who is affected with evils or there is a jinn, a person there should call the adhan and he should actually come close and say the adhan because sometimes the jinn actually is inside the person, has taken over the body of the person and they don't like to hear that at all, right? Besides that, yes, you have the, uh, the, those things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned about <coughs> Ayatul Kursi, <coughs> about the recitation of Surah Falak and Surah Nas. You know, these things are mentioned there. You know, in fact, it was for the sake to, to um, destroy black magic that Surah Falak and Surah Nas were revealed. You know, um, so therefore these things are there. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also, there were verses that were revealed when there was bad nazar. Bad eyes, you know, bad eyes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Ainu Hakkun, eyes, they are the truth. In other words, what he wanted to say is that the the bad effects that the eyes can have on a person and the, the you know the, the harms that the eyes can do, you know, it is the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no no superstitious belief about that. He says, Al Ainu Hakkun. So what people will call Bad Nazar. Yeah. You know, and the olden uh, language you say, but Najar. <laughs> Malju. <laughs> they, they used to change the za for jim. Right. Yeah, Malju Mal and all these things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. it, it really occurs, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, you have those prescriptions in the hadith directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that will actually remove that. So that's one, the first thing we are mm -hmm. looking at. Rokya is evident, and Rokya with ayats of the Quran, Rokya with du'as. You know, whatever du'as have been narrated, it is evident. But further than that, so uh, the first stage is there is absolutely no harm and no problem doing ruqya with these things in that manner. There is no question regarding its permissibility and its authenticity. It is very, very clear. Further than that is that, you know, you have combinations that have been mentioned here. Like read the third kalima so many times and read Surah Fatiha probably 21 times. And then probably read La ilaha illanta subhanaka inni kuntu min al probably 100 times. And you know, this might be one combination. Mm -hmm. But you have many different combinations that you may see in a book. Or you go on the site and you see it. Or if anybody is afflicted with any such problem here and they go to somebody down here, that person may have a different uh, combination. Mm -hmm to give him and you have that and if you would really look to, to find those things uh, mentioned as uh, documented as they were mentioned in any tradition any hadith or any written book then by by authentic and sound scholars you will not see that combination so what actually happens when you see combinations of that a collection of a lot of du'as recited many times is that people who would have given that to do is uh, they have looked at the power and the value of one certain thing, you know, and they realize that by doing it so many times, it will work. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of time is based on their tajruba. Tajruba means their own experience. This is why you do have many books called al-mujarrabat. Al-mujarrabat means experiences <coughs> that when people came to them and this one was affected with black magic the other one was you know affected with somebody uh, casting a charm on him the other one was you know affected with voodoo or something like that mm -hmm. obia whatever you call it that they were reading a certain things and probably the thing was still there but when they started to read other things now they realized the thing started to, to become scared and run and leave so that's now based on their experience so therefore, because of that, now they decided to, uh, to add this with that, yeah. <laughs> you know, to make it a formula. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that is how many things came because each one on its own, mm -hmm. it is powerful. The third kalima is powerful. Surah Fatiha is very powerful. Ayatul Kursi is very powerful. Surah Falak and Naz, they are powerful. So the thing that if it is read so many times, yeah. you know, when this will become so powerful yeah. that no shaitan can withstand that. Yeah. So this is how it would come about. So therefore, doing it, believing that probably they are experiences, good experiences, meaning experience, good experiences and that people read it and they were cured. People mm -hmm. read it and others and these things were cured. Mm -hmm. And then these things, oh, it's a, a asal, it's origin 
from the, 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 the hadith itself because the hadith has mentioned this, this and this. So therefore you just read it more times. You know, so therefore there will be there will be jawas and there will be permissible because you are not doing something opposing to the teachings of the mm -hmm. Prophet sallallahu mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So while you might not be able to find it identically like that, you know, there is some asal for it and origin for it that shows that it is good and it is permissible. It is not different mantras that a person made up like, you know, he made up on Islamic words, made up non-Arabic words that belong to a different religion and, 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 and these things are, are coming about, you know, no. So therefore it's permissible, but not with the belief that that is accurately coming from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in our daily lives, there are many things that we do and we do for the sake of cure. You know, even in the medical world, whatever the doctor will say to us, because all these things are permissible. You know, but just like in a medical field, also in the spiritual field, if a person tells you to do something that is on Islamic, you can do it. You know, if a person tells you to read words that actually words are coming from the Bible or words are coming from the scriptures of another religion, you know, and calling other deities and calling on other gods beside Allah, this is clear shirk and a person must not do it. Even though the person telling you to do it is a Muslim, this is totally wrong. Or the person is making you do certain things. A person, if you go to visit a person and he says, listen, you have to bring, you know, a, a goat and sacrifice it here because the thing that is going to help you is going to benefit from the blood and you have to bring all these different things. And you, you know, you find out about it and you realize it's totally opposing the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the teachings of Islam. So there is a big no for that. So ruqya with du'as, ruqya with the Quranic ayats, you know, and all these different du'as coming from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is beneficial. It is beneficial. You know, like a simple thing like the Rood Sharif is a powerful amal against the shay shaitan. You know, and a person can read it many times and many times until it starts to help him. Mm -hmm. Ayatul Kursi, you can read it until you begin to become cured. But one of the downfall is that sometimes people don't do what they have to do. And then what happens? They say they are not getting cured. Mm -hmm. And then they have no choice, or not that they have no choice, they turn towards <laughs> what? Doing something that is not evident in the Sharia, and in that they may get some cure, mm -hmm. because it might be connected to some shaitan. Okay, I think there's a call. Yeah. Um, yes, okay, sure. Uh, hello, caller. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Hi. salam. Um, I wonder if I know this, um, you know these people who go around, um, which, you know, these is Jehovah Witness people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you come home and you, um, by by like by me and by like other people, Muslims. Mm -hmm. And some people might um, you know, run them and curse them and think no, ignorant people. But like um if you know, sometimes you have time and you you call them in and you invite them and you, you tell them like you know, you put your points forward and you know, they might be telling you about their religion but you put in your religion mm -hmm. to them, you know. Win trying to win them over. And in, instead of them influencing you, is there anything wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I, I understand what you, you say, but from our experience, we had a lot of experiences with these people long ago, <laughs> you know, before it, I went to study. It happens anyhow. Yeah, a lot, because you used to give them a hearing, yeah. you know, and they take one, they take a lot of time. Yeah. Now, we must understand that from the time they leave, they gather together on the Sunday morning, you know, they are prompted, you know, and they are actually energized. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have a message and you have to deliver that message. You know, there is another call, is that? Do, do we have no? Oh, yeah. No. You know, they are actually energized and, and, you know, strengthened with the thing that you are going to preach the word of God. Obviously, this is their faith and this is their religion. So they believe in what they are told. And we can't blame them for that in the sense that this is their thing and this is what they believe in. They are coming to us. So they believe that we are not on the right path and they are on the right path. So they are coming to and for everything we can say to them uh, that they have an answer for that you know many times uh, you know we spoke we used to in fact we enjoy speaking to them because we used to read all those books you know written by Ahmadidat and all these things there you know <laughs> so we, we had a good understanding of what they had what they, 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 they believed in you know Christianity but you know, they follow a different thing separate from the um, the mainstream, you know, Christians like, you You know, they are Jehovah Witnesses. They're different from the Anglicans, the Presbyterians, the, the, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Roman Catholics. They are totally different, you know. But at the end of it is that what we realize is that they wouldn't listen to you at all. Mm -hmm. 
That's one thing they wouldn't do. They may give you a hearing. You know, they may give you a hearing, but they may actually interact with you in order to present their message. Mm -hmm. But there is no way at the end of it, you know, like a normal Christian, like the New Testament Christian, if you have them in an argument, you know, and you can show them, they will begin to simmer down and cool down and they will mm -hmm. say, yeah, you know what you say is making sense. Mm -hmm. And eventually it has an effect. But people who are actually worked on in this way, they, they wouldn't give in then. Because their prime objective is to leave that message, you know. And at the end of it, you realize it's about three hours have gone in old talk. And you have not been able. Yes, you may have said something, yeah. but they didn't. They are not going to take that on. Yeah. So the best way to do is don't waste your time. You know, you may think you are doing good, but they are enjoying the fact that you have given them time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They enjoy that. That's what they want. Now, when they go back and they give their karuzari, <laughs> you know, yeah. they team up and they, they are going to say, well, you know, I spent so much time with this person and I presented the message of God and I left. They make sure that they leave the magazine with you. Mm -hmm. You know, when they are leaving now, they say, well, at least, even if you say you don't have time to read it, say, well, someday you will read it. Yeah. They're very clever. Remember, they are trained. And even if you insult them, they will never get angry. You know, they wouldn't get angry. If you curse them and you drive them, they wouldn't make you angry. Say, okay, well, have a nice day and they will go again. Yeah. You know, but the purpose is that they want to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, the, the best way, you know, I mean, as you ask this question, and this is for all our Muslims, we don't have that amount of time to waste. And sometimes, if a Muslim is not well grounded in his deen, when he hears something else, it begins to make him confused about mm -hmm. his own deen. That's, that's what happens. It makes him confused about his own religion. And by the time people leave, remember, shaitan is working with dalalat, with misguidance. And by the time a person leaves, after speaking to you for one hour or two hours, then what happens is that it makes you doubtful about your own religion. It makes you doubtful about your own religion. So from the beginning, at the onset, don't entertain by having them over you know a person is passing be civilized you know yes you know they will say okay can i have a word with you say listen i'm not really interested in listening to anything yeah. because i am a muslim i follow islam i am a strong believer i follow the holy quran we already have a message thank you for passing but you know i i wouldn't have that time and they understand yeah. then they will say okay have a nice day and that's what you want you know so don't get involved the more you talk they will talk you will talk they will talk <laughs> and that's it doesn't end yeah. right i want to I want to just touch on one other point yes. when we're speaking about Rukia Mufi. Yes, yes. Now, we spoke about Rukia in terms of uh, blowing on yourself yes. or, or, or a, another, person. A, another person, right? Yes. We have seen also, uh, let's say in terms of somebody might want protection or, or barakat in their mm -hmm. business place mm -hmm. or maybe a house, they are now moving in into a house or for some reason... And we have seen people also blow in, let's say, into some water. Yes. Right? And then probably using that water to sprinkle around and all of that. Yes. What, what would you say about that uh, method? Well, some of these things uh, do have an effect. Okay? But mm -hmm. we have to always know the limit. Mm -hmm. This is why knowledge about certain things is extremely important. Because the awam, meaning the common Muslims, normally you are affected and uh, you are told so and so helps you. Mm -hmm. So the person goes with the intention that yes, that person is going to help me do whatever he has mm -hmm. asked me to do. And they do sometimes wrong things, you know. So therefore, yes, you were saying like, you know, uh, you want barakah in your house. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a place in which Surah Baqarah is read, shaitan cannot come close there. So therefore, from this we learn that if you feel and you sense that there are shayateen and devils in your house, mm -hmm. jinnats, mm -hmm. begin to recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Right. You make it an amal every day, one ruku every day or one, one, one juz every day, you know, uh, one small portion every day, you know, until you finish it and keep reading Quran. In fact, generally, shaitan doesn't visit a house in which the Quran is recited. Mm -hmm. So Quran mm -hmm. should be a farus thing mm -hmm. in every house of a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Right? The other thing, your business place, have Surah Baqarah recited there. Yeah. If you can't recite it, call two or three people, people who you know can recite it. Within mm -hmm. half an hour, everybody take a juice and recite yeah. the whole uh, Surah yeah. Baqarah. Yeah. And in other words, so to say, you have cleaned your place there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But then, 
If you, you read it in water, yes, it's good also because the effect will come to the water. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also did that. You know, not only on water he blew and he gave others to drink. Mm -hmm. You know, the Sahabas mm -hmm. also, his saliva, when he recited, he took the saliva, took his saliva and passed it over yeah. like the person was bitten, you know, and thing by the snake, a scorpion, etc. All these things work, right? But, you know, when people have to to smoke out different places mm -hmm. and you know I also it come to my hearing they take they want to tie the place so they go with four nails yeah. and they nail <laughs> four corners and then they, they have you doing all these having all these different beliefs you know I'll put one gin here and one gin there and one gin and then it goes on and goes on and it doesn't work and then they check again and say oh the gins left they had to go mm -hmm. somewhere so mm -hmm. when they left the shayatin came in mm -hmm. you know so it just one lie leads to many lies and one uh, corrupted belief it leads to other corrupted beliefs so you know when we do you know like KM, you know our sharia our deen has given us such a beautiful way that once we hold on to it alhamdulillah we will be protected and our places will be protected from the devils mm -hmm. you know a simple thing like reading surah yasin which is a, a teaching of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam every morning when you do that, no evil can touch you. Surah Yasin every morning. Then after Maghrib Salat, it's Masnoon and Sunnah to re recite Surah Waqi'ah. And then after, after uh, Isha, to recite Surah Mulk. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And when you recite Ayatul Kursi mm -hmm. after every Salat, mm -hmm. and recite in the morning three times Surah Falak, that's Surah Ikhlas first. Yes. Surah Falak, and Nas, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, no devil can come close to you. Yeah. So if we do that, yeah. we will always be protected. But the yeah. thing, nobody's doing it. <laughs> yeah, true. You know, so as soon as something happens, you want to run for the easiest way out. <laughs> yeah. It would work you. So we get, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, in, caught up in a lot of mm -hmm. things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. I just want to answer one more before yes. we go on a break. And it's probably also what we, uh, probably in line with what we are speaking yes. about. How do you address a situation in which you have a scholar in a family who is using jinns for protection and assistance, claiming the jinns are Muslim. Mm -hmm. And what does Islam say about such people and how do you deal with a situation like yeah. this? Well, first and foremost, it is not permissible. This is a very, very clear, clear understood mas'ala in Islam that it's not permissible to seek help from the jinns and use the jinns for helping you. The jiddats, they are mustaqil creation, separate creation. They have their own world and you have your own world. And Allah has not allowed us to interact and, and break the barriers beside, between these two worlds. They live, they eat, they drink, they marry, they have their children and they live. They do, they do their own things. You do your own things. These, they are, some, they are wicked ones from among the, the species of the jinns and shayatin that they are always trying to cause harm to the what? To the human beings. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi was, this is something that from the very beginning, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the two angels, Harut and Marut at the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam, to teach the people the difference between doing what is good to protect yourself and what is evil from taking help from the jinnats. So the, the, you know, the, the, they came to Babylon, the city of Babylon, and they, they came to actually teach the people. That is Harut and Marut. Now, uh, Islam has given us the cure for all these problems that can come. The jinn loves, the jinnats love dirty places. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, don't keep your place dirty, always keep it clean. Okay? In your homes, angels that protect you don't ever enter your house when you have dogs and pictures of animate objects. But the shayateen, they love that. So once you have these things going on in your home and you have these pictures and dogs, the shayateen will visit you. Angels will come. But if you clean your house from these things, the angels will be there. They will protect you. Once you recite Quran and do ibadah, the angels will always be around you. The Prophet ﷺ says, go into the washroom. The jinnats and the shaitan, they like to see nudity. They like to see nakedness. So when you take off your clothing from your body, they like to see that. They come and they you know, influence you and they play with you at that time. He says, so before you enter the washroom, say the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al qubuthi wal khaba'is. Then when you do that, protect yourself. That, that will protect you from shayateen. Before you go to bed, while you are asleep, the shayateen try to enter. 
read your ayatul kursi, read your du'as, and blow it on yourself, you will be protected. All these things. In other words, <coughs> he has not left any such opening where we can say our deen don't have the answer. Let's, let's, let's take help from our brothers, the jinns. <laughs> you know, he hasn't left that. He never taught that and the sahabas never did that. Okay, so therefore this is how it is. So too it is not permissible for the jinns to take help from human beings, but they use human beings to feed them. All these different things, people who, especially non-Muslims, have to regularly do their slaughter and their, their, their meat and their, their, their blood and all these things and human sacrifice. They are worshipping the jinns. You know, so sometimes now these human beings interfere with the jinns where they do certain things and they read certain things to gain dominance over the jinns to they enslave the jinns. Mm -hmm. When they enslave the jinns, it's like you have locked up a prisoner and you have tied them and you keep on threatening this jinn that you have gained control over that if you do not obey me, I will burn you. And they are scared. Because yes, certain things you read, they can burn, you can burn them. So you have them living in slavery, which is totally haram in Islam. That's one level, which is totally haram. Further than that, you are seeking help from them. You don't seek help from Allah at all. Everything that is happening to you with sickness or with problems, you are calling on your jinns. You are calling upon one of them. Then you begin to tell people you can communicate with them and they can communicate with you. This is not permissible. People come to you and they tell you about certain things. Rather than doing ruqya, you are calling the jinn and telling the jinn to do this and to do that. The jinn has no choice because you have enslaved the jinn. This is totally haram. This is not permissible. If someone enslaves you and puts you on the chain, you know, and threatens you, they will kill you if you leave, then that is not Islam. So the jinn have a life on their own also. You know, so this is totally, all these things are totally impermissible in Islam. It is not halal at all. But people do it. Obviously, we live in a country where there is no system where you have a, a governed by Islamic State that the, the, the Islamic State will take people to task and imprison, imprison them like long ago. You know, even Muslim countries now, once you are going away from the teachings, mm -hmm. they lock you up, they imprison you and they tell the people, they publicize it. So, you know, in these places like the Western countries, etc., it's total freedom. People mm -hmm. do what they, they want. And they are doing wrong things. Some people do wrong things and interfere with the females also. They touch their bodies and all these things. So many different reports. These people are corrupt people. So, therefore, uh, as an advice to our Muslims, once these people, they are going down this line, stay away from them. Refrain from them. You know, no good can come from them because of the fact that they are doing something that is totally against Islam.